What up? It's 10 minutes with Pika Diff. How are you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm glad that you came with. We are at Baliwag. I want to run him through some Filipino food and we bumped into this big Baliwag restaurant and the first stop on the docket is going to be Black Gulaman. How do you pronounce that? It's Sabut Gulaman. Gulaman? Gulaman, yeah. Gulaman. That's, this is Gulaman. Like, I don't, okay, sago is the red thing, okay. the little balls, which is basically Filipino boba, and then the black thing is the gulaman. Okay. I don't know what the drink is, though, like the proper drink, because okay. it, it kind of melts in the shaved ice, right? Yep. Okay, so let me know what you feel, what you think. Well, it's my first time trying it, guys. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It, it's refreshing, it, yeah? It is refreshing. Right. So I, I've been having this for the better part of my whole life. All 24 years of my life. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, uh, is, is there is there a cultural equivalent to the other place you've been to? It's a good glamour. Not really. It's my first time ever trying something like this. Yeah. So really unique, but I, I like it a lot. It's a it's halfway good. between. Dessert and a drink. Yeah. Right. It's hot in the Philippines, so. It does get hot. How hot does it get in the summer? Whatever this is. Like that, I'm just used to that. Whatever that is. Yeah? It's the, it's the same all year round? It only gets worse when the government says it's worse. <laughs> so it's like, oh, heat stroke, whatever. Yeah. So. True. Oh, sheesh. So that's uh, called uh, Bagnet Sinigang. Yeah, so bagnet is a deep fried pork, like super deep fried pork, and then sinigang is like a sour soup type dish okay. that is like warm and uh, yeah. And then this right here is tofu, tofu yeah. but in the Philippines it's very specifically called tokwat baboy, tofu, tofu and pork, tokwat baboy. So you put soy sauce on it, okay. and then it's sweet and salty. And this right here. This is dinuguan. It's pork blood stew. That's it. So there's a lot of pork and then a little so bit which of. Which one's your favorite? Oh, for sure this one. Right? For sure this one. Yeah. This is this is this is comfort food. So this is our pretend healthy food. <laughs> like, <laughs> just so that we can pretend just to be healthy. healthy. Half pork. Yeah, but still m mostly pork. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, Pika, go ahead and uh, grab some of this. Okay. <clears throat> it's uh, just. Uh, there you go. So that's the a get a little bit of everything. Yeah. everything yeah. yeah, some eggplant in eggplant? there. Yeah. Yeah. I see that you guys like eat a lot with uh, eggplant. Oh yeah, no, we do everything with eggplant. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Get the soup in. So the, the soup broth is sometimes sour. Sometimes you, you want a little more soup on that, bro. You want yeah. a little more soup? So more? Yeah. To the top? Uh, as much as you can, yeah. Like that? Yeah, a little more, yeah. So it's sour, it's sometimes sweet, yeah. Some, there's a little bit of spice sometimes. There you go. Alright, hit that. Tell me what to think. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try the broth first. Yes, of course. There you go, it's warm. Mm, this is good. Right? I like it a lot. Yeah, it's sour. It's, yeah. it's sour, okay. but like, it hits the spot. Like, you know, it's like, it's comfort food. Like, you can tell, like, it's like, it relaxes you down, this is good. Yeah. I feel like, I can have, like, a lot of this. See, I told you, now you want more soup. I do, I do. Alright, how about the pork, though? I'm gonna try some of the pork. So there's a... So there's a there's a there's a there's a conflict right because this is soft and warm and then the pork is crunchy because it's like triple fried. This is really good. Yeah. I like pork a lot. There you go. That's a sinigang baby. All right, let's do the um, tokwat baboy next. So usually what we do with the tokwat baboy is I'm gonna need your help with this. Okay. Take all that. Yep. Just dump it in here. All of it. Yeah. Just shower it, bro. Okay, let's do it. Do it some on the table too, but that's fine. That's fine. Table can have some soy sauce. <laughs> there it is. And just mix it up. There you go. There you go. So tofu is very dry, right? Especially this kind of tofu. So that's why the soy sauce needed to like drench it all. Yep. Yeah. All right. So grab some and then let me know what you think. It's sweet. It's salty. Thank you, bro. There you go. 
So yeah, it, it, some of them is like this guy's pork. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's pork is Thai's tofu. But the pork and tofu kind of looks similar. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. Golden crisp. Yeah, it's golden crispy. Like you can't even tell them apart. Yeah. So the thing about uh, this kind of dish, not what Bob is we've had sisi, right? Yeah. So sometimes it's combined with sisi, and then people eat it while drinking. Okay. It's called pulutan. pulutan. Yeah, pulutan is basically from the Philippine word pulut, which is pick up. Okay. So while you're drinking, you're just picking food up. Oh, there you go. It's like drink, <laughs> pick up food, drink, pick up food. Okay. Yes. All right. So this is both pulutan and real like food, like a okay. di- meal, like a dish. All right. Go ahead. We'll try the tofu first. The tofu first. Tofu is a little bit dry, but with the soy sauce, it gets yeah. it tastes better. Yeah, that's why you need the soy sauce. The soy sauce, sauce. Has like, a, like a flavor to it. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. So then you, you combo with the pork and the soy sauce and the tofu, and it's a full combo. And now I'm going to try the pork. I wonder how different that is from this pork. A little bit different. Like, you know, like this pork, like, it's crispy, but it has like the broth mixed mm-hmm. in with it too. This is all crispy. Thick. This is all crispy. Yeah. Even with the soy sauce, it's still crispy. So it just accents the, the tofu. All together, it's, it's, a, it's a different dish. Yeah, it's, it's, a, different it's a lighter dish. I like it. It's good. Not bad. Still didn't beat this one, though. Yeah, Sinigang's number one. <laughs> this is Bawa with Baboy. All right, Dinuguan times. So uh, we pre served some, and that is. Blood stew. It's pork blood stew. Pork blood stew. Yep. All right. I can't describe the taste of it. Like I can't. I don't think I've seen anything you eat like just just like this. Would you eat it with like rice or with something else? On point. Oh, everything with rice. Everything with rice. So you can just okay. taste it first, though. Just, yeah, just okay. taste it first. Texture might be trippy, but it's weird. It's like a little bit thick. Like, it's hard to explain the taste. Right? It doesn't taste that bad either. It's not bad. Yeah. Like it's. I like it. Yeah, but it, it, it's it's not something that you would go immediately. I want that. Yeah. Not an everyday thing. Yeah. 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 But you know, once in a while, I can see myself having it. But honestly, I thought it would taste a lot worse because no one like you said it. It's blood. Blood. But honestly, it's not that bad. Yeah. So try it with rice. Like that's the usual combo. That with rice or that with rice cakes. I don't know. I, I guess everything with rice is. <laughs> Better with rice. Right? It's because it's it cuts through it or it, it combo, yeah. So that's a, that's the nuguan. So of the three dishes, this has to be my number one, guarantee for sure. This was like the perfect dish. Like the pork was crispy, and when it touches your mouth, like my mouth was just like savoring. Like it was so good, and even the broth, like it was like bitter. But like, I like it bitter, like, like I like it salty, so this has to be my number one for sure. But out of these two, I don't know, I had to go with the, with the love soup, you know, like I like my soups and my moist. This one was like a little bit dry when I tried the tofu and when I tried the pork, but then I had to go with number two with this one. Yeah. And number three would be... My pick up and drink food. Yeah. <laughs> of the two, this is the actual dish. This is more like a, like an appetizer yeah. or like, again, yeah, pulutan. So, yeah, I think I'll agree with you. Hard to beat. I, I tried my best to put on a little <laughs> trip for uh, our guest here. Uh, let's talk some ML. What are you doing with the guy? For the guys at home. They're, they're not home yet, but they're on their way home. They're in the sky. Yeah, they're in the sky right now, or maybe a layover somewhere. You know, but they're on their way. They're actually talking to them before they leave. Like, we ask them if they want to stay or if they want to go home. They're actually excited to go home. Because being away from home for like a month can be hard. They miss their friends, they miss their families, they miss their own beds. Right. They were already out for MBLI. Yes. Yeah. So very hungry. We're in Asia since beginning of November. 
Like, almost too much. Like almost too much training for FPLI. Then have to complete FPLI. Then they had F5 coming up. And then F5 to stage. So some of them, they're kind of excited to be on their way home. You know, it dawned on me now that you're talking about it. Do you think there's a little bit of fatigue that went into that, like their whole run? I felt like, did they feel fatigue working with them? Working with them, when I, I kind of arrived a bit later, I arrived November 26th. And you know, they kind of have like a, like a set schedule of what to do every day. You know, they would, every day they would scrim three times a day, and then they would wake up and scrim and then eat, scrim and review, and then I kind of felt like they were a little bit burnt out, you know? Like, uh, they didn't have a day to actually sit back and recover, you know? Because every day was the same thing, like, it was like a routine for them, man. You know, like, sometimes you just need to just have a day off, you know, and not be burnt out and stressed about both, both your teammates or with your coach or with anyone else. You just sit back and relax and have fun. So in POB's run here in M5, you were both technically manager and coach, right? Yeah. You were you were with them in the stands. You were helping them draft. What was that like? Especially since you came in a little late, yeah? Yeah. So coming in a little bit late, I kinda have to earn their trust. You know? Because they really have like a set schedule plan. But you've been there for a long time. I know them for a long time, but it's different like in person because in North America, I rarely see these guys. Right. Like, in, the, know, in the real, yeah. Yeah, North America, I see these guys like two or three times a year max. So it's different, like, you know, like we PC, we talk to one another, we DM each other on Discord and stuff like that, but it's different when you're face to face with someone. Because you, know, you actually see how that person is and you know how to work with them from face to face. So it's really different. So, winning trust was the number one key thing that I wanted to do with them, because I want them to trust me and I, I want to trust them as well, you know? So with that said, knowing how they perform and listening in game, because in the dugout, yeah. comms play, yeah? Yeah, they comms. Were their comms good this time around? Was, uh, was that a point of improvement or did the boys sound good? When things were going good, the comms were good, you know, like they had a set in, kind of picking a minute ahead. They know what they want to do against their opponent and they were, you know, play aggressive. But when the things that I, would, I told them to perform is their communication when they're behind. Because I feel like communication is key. Like, it's a game, you know, like it's not perfect. There are going to be times where mistakes are going to happen. You know, you're not playing your best game or you're making mistakes or the enemies make a great play, you know? You have to learn to accept that and adapt to it, you know? And, and still talk about it. Yeah. In-game. Like, yeah, still talk about in-game. Like, think about your next game. You know, I feel like when we are behind, you know, um, we kind of get lost, you know? And that's something that POV would need to work on if they want to take it to the next step. Someone who really leveled up, and again, I did not expect for me to be a fan of immediately, or in the few matches that they actually played. Talk to me about Mielo. Mielo really just showed off. Like, people were saying prior to, to M5, like, Mielo's the legit, Mielo's the GOAT. And I'm like, yeah, no, but last time I saw him when I first met him, he didn't even play, right? Yeah. So, watching him in the NACT, it made sense. But watching him on stage was something else. Yeah. So what was Melo like? Melo like? I kind of like Melo a lot. You know, I learned like because I see him play until I he did good, but made some mistakes as well. But then seeing how he performed and strands on stage, like you could really tell like he leveled up. You know, on stage I felt like he played really well, and I think like, on stage played, specifically. Yeah, that I, I felt like he played his expectation like you know like he what he could do as a as an explainer or as a teammate you know um, like he was in my opinion like I already told you this I think Melo played the best 
on the QOB. Like he did his job as an XP laner. He opened up space for his teammates. Like played aggressive. He made one of my favorite plays that he made is when he two v one against uh, against homeboy. Yeah, yeah. When he killed Joy two v one and he lived. Right. He was bathing. He was bathing. And then like, let me turn this around. Well, right, exactly. Right. Like he was bathing. Like you know. And then like everyone thought he was dead. And then he killed Joy. Like that was one of the craziest plays. Like I stood up and like I was going crazy with it. Me too. Me too. Yeah. And, you know, like that's the melody that I know. And I hope like he continue playing. And I hope like he has that same energy. So like knowing Milo, like anything he says, like he doesn't really mean it. Like uh, he's not like a toxic person. He just says it for like for the show. For the show, kind of. Yeah. You know, like he's one of the nicest person that I know. Can can so, can confirm. So I want you guys like. Please do not take anything that he says seriously. You know, he's just doing it for the show. But Melo is for sure, like, for sure leveling up on stage, for sure. I'm excited to see more of Melo, and I hope nothing but the best for him in the near future, especially in the next season of the NSC team. Someone I want to talk about that we haven't seen in a while is your boy Zia. We actually saw a good bunch of TOB in the last big international event, right? We saw them at MSC. Yes. Uh, we saw Best Player, we saw Carlos there, um, we saw Shark there, um, Hoon was there. But how about Zia? Zia? Last time Zia was on the world stage was in 2021. That's a long time ago. What's Zia like? So, <clears throat> I, Zia, I felt like Zia played well, like good as well. You know, like he didn't get caught up as much and he made plays when he needed to. Like with his Broly or, you know, with his, um, what's, with his win win as well. Like, he didn't die as much and he also did his job. Um, like, out of the groups, I actually think, like, out of the four teams, like, Gold I actually think, like, Zero played the best. Like, he played really well. You know, he even played Derek against Joy, yep. which is good against, like, you know, and we never practiced her. Like in he, just, he just has it. Yeah, you know, he just has it in him. And from transitioning one role to another, like M3 2021, he was a mid laner. Mid laner, yeah. Yeah, so he was a mid laner when he was an age. And adjusting to, like, you know, like, probably one of the hardest roles, the carry role. The most important role. The most important role <laughs> in the game, you know? It's a big step. It's a big transition. And, you know, and he, he lived up to it. I felt like he played well. He lived up to it. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he stayed with it, right? Um, the fact that he had transition, the fact that he continued to play, I love it. He is Filipino, by the way. <laughs> Mielo as well. Speaking of which, in the grander scheme of MLBB Esports, the word import has been coming up. Import out of your country, yeah. import into your scene. Yeah. And because of what's going on, because of how competitive things are, the word now has a weight. The word now might even be considered a bad word, you know, like a four-letter word for some. What's your take on this? Again, coming from a developing region, yeah. coming from NACT, and seeing players of different descents, different heritages, playing in your scene, what's your take on imports? In my take, um, I don't mind having imports. I feel like it'll help grow the region, help grow the scene. You know, it's kind of like I can see how people could dislike it because they want people who live in America to represent their country, not you know someone from another country or import to represent their country. So I kind of see the good and the bad. But if we want to see the future for North America, like I think that having imports would be good. Not for North America specifically. Just for other regions as well. Other regions as well. I agree. Actually, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be bad. I don't think there should be any bad. Unless people see it that way. Yeah. Because I think the game is a global game. MLB is a global yeah. game. Yeah. Everyone plays it. You know, from every country, every region. You know? There doesn't have to be borders. Okay. From the big uh, picture, so again, let's go back to NA. Just to wrap this up, what do you think is going to happen to NACT in 2024? Because the scene has grown. For since M3 when BTK broke out, 
since the days of the valley where things started to look like, hey, there's orgs coming in or players are now more recognizable beyond just the big faces and the big names. What's 2024 looking like? 2024, <clears throat> I can't, you know, leak too much. Oh, oh. You know, of course. We almost got him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but there's going to be a 20, there's going to be an NACP spring. There's going to be an NACP fall. Not much, of course. Yeah. You know, hopefully we get invited to more international tournaments. You know, that's the only thing that I can hope for, fingers crossed. But, you know, I can't, I don't want to explain too much, but hopefully for NACP, you know, we grew from having only two teams in the NACP finals from having four teams. So that's a huge upgrade to having four teams, and I hope it keeps on growing. Because one, I hope one day that we can have eight teams on stage, eight different teams on stage one day, you know? And I hope that we keep on growing and we keep on working together. I want to go to NCT one day. Dave, Dave bothers me like every every month, like, hey go. man, you want to come over? <laughs> like, we'll work it out. But yeah, no, I only really wish the best for NCT. And yeah, no, I hope that the big international events still has a good NA presence. Because, I don't know, I wanted to fight for it. Not that I have any power, I'm just, I wish this, this could be. There could, there should have been, or at least, another slot in the wild card for NA. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't that have been cool, like, if Avalon flew out? Avalon, a whole different, like, the only one, only play that people recognize would be basic. But then they have, Four new teammates, four new girls who've never played on a bigger stage than NACT. Make new stars. So it would be, it would be cool to have like a wild spot or even another spot for F5, you know? So I hope the game keeps on growing so NA can keep on growing. We need to, we need it, we need it. To wrap up 10 minutes with Pika, I need you to name three players that haven't played on the international stage that people should watch out for in NACT. You can play more than three. This is a hard one. I know, I put you on the spot. Mm. <laughs> um, like, what happened they didn't play the previous NACT? That's fine. That's fine. If, if they come back, then all the more. Back, okay. Another person, one of the person I would say is watch out for Nicolette. For Nicolette. For Nicolette. Nicolette. Oh, she's she's a mid laner. Yeah. Right? Kagura. She, yeah. yeah. She's known for Kagura. He, um, Louis, but she's good with all the majors. You know, I feel like, feel like, she's like one of the best majors in North America. And plus, she's a female. So imagine like, she competes in NCT and her team makes it to the M series. The empowerment. That, would that be the first female to ever on the world stage? On the world stage. Yes. Yes. It would be the first. So one of the players I would say is to watch out for her. Um, Tarzan, who was on Avalon. Different Tarzan? Different Tarzan. Not triple the sports Tarzan? Yeah, uh -huh. the jungler for Avalon. So I say watch out for him. A lot of people told me he has been improving and playing a lot better. You know, and maybe beating BTK in the in the losers final mm -hmm. kind of gave him momentum. And, you know, to even try even harder for the next NAC. Zane Slayer. Yes, because, you know, beating one of the best known teams in the scene for a long time, you know, isn't easy. It's super difficult and, you know, that gave him momentum to keep on working harder for the next one. Because he knows, maybe he knows he got what it takes to be, to be the next best jungler. And it was this close. Yes, it was this close, you know. So if they stick together and if he has a good team, you could possibly see him in the next season and ACT playing well. One more. All right, I, I like that I still know these players because I have had, my, you know, a bit of my eyes on NACD anyways. I always try to keep a foot in. So Nicolette, Tarzan, and... You got a jungler and a mid laner. This is more so... It has to be a player, can it be a team? Can it be a team? Can it be a team? If they're still together by NACD. So... I don't want to like it. <laughs> no, I, won't, I won't say it. I'll say another player. Okay. Okay, I won't leak it. I won't leak it. Almost. I'll, I'll let them leak it, and then when I see it, then I'll talk more about You'll it. You'll say it. that's the one. Yes. That's the one. Yes. Okay. Um, another player I'll say to watch out for. Uh, 
this is a hard question. Yeah. Because there's so many players. That's right, you want to name all of them. Yeah. I want to name all of them, but I can't, like, you know, like. The first one. <laughs> Maybe, maybe zero would be another one to watch. Zero. Because the reason why I say zero, like a lot of people already know, he's always switching roles, you know? From like jungler to mage, you know? I feel like if he has like a set role, you know, he would, would take off. He would perform really well. So another player to watch out for at ACT would be zero. Zero, stick to one. <laughs> and then we'll see. <laughs> Alright, speak up. Before we say goodbye, let everyone watching know where they can find you on social media. And Krishana, uh, the, the Filipino fans. Okay. So on YouTube and Twitch, you can find me. Um, just search up Pikadiff. And shout out to all of my fans out there. Thank you so much for supporting me, TLB, Leo, and everyone that's here in the M series. And I hope you guys keep on supporting. Thank you very much. Pika signing out. We're going to enjoy some Sinigang, y'all. Baby, I'm great. Catch us in the next 10 minutes with.